Hello everybody and welcome to today's webinar, Creating an Inclusive Learning Experience for All with Reading, Write and Orbit Note. My name's Angela, if you don't know me, and I work within the education team at Text Help, meaning that I work closely with schools, colleges and universities as well to ensure that Text Help products have a positive impact on teaching and learning. My colleague Laura also joins us today. Uh, if you'd just like to introduce yourself, Laura. Yes, hi, uh, welcome everybody. My name's Laura. I work in Text Help and I cover colleges and universities. So I deal with everything accessibility, all of our solutions, any needs that you have, feel free to reach out. All right, thank you. Um, if I am looking over to this side, it's because my camera is not working on this side today. So uh, apologies for that. But there is a box just to note on the right hand side where you can ask any questions and interact with us as we go along today. So just jump in there and introduce yourself if you want. Say hello. Uh, also, just to let you know that there are no closed captions in today's webinar, but if you need them, please do get in touch and we can get those over to you after the session. So uh, I would like to start out by saying that here at Text Help, everything that we do has a purpose. And that is that we want to help everybody understand and be understood. And this is something that we really focus on with the work that we, that we do here. Our vision then is a world where difference, disability and language are no longer barriers. So we need to understand the unique challenges and barriers faced by individual students or by populations of students to be able to provide the right additional supports to help them overcome those barriers. So uh, many of you may already be familiar with some of these, but just so you know, Text Help provide a range of tools that support each of these areas that you see on the screen here. So if you, um, you have reading, writing and comprehension, you have automated assessment of writing, you have PDF support, practice reading aloud, and also there you have digital maths. But just for today, we'll be taking you through two of our tools and that is Read and Write and Orbit Note. Many of you here today may be a SENCO or you work in some form of student disability role. And um, what I want to highlight today is that whilst the products that Laura's gonna show here are necessary for some of those students that you may be working with, they are beneficial for everyone. So our products are available as site licenses so that everyone can access them and benefit from using them as well. Uh, if you haven't seen it before, here we have our Read and Write software, which has a comprehensive set of features all in one place that support language, build fluency and vocabulary development, and it helps students to express themselves as well. So Read and Write as a whole, as I said, it helps students to understand, as I previously said, engage and express themselves through um, lots of different ways, including text to speech, you have dictionaries and there is speech to text to name a few, but more importantly, it gives students the opportunity to learn in a way which is best suited to them. And Laura will show you how this works in just a few moments. Our newest tool released then is our PDF support tool and that is Orbit Note. So it's very easy to share a PDF document with a group of students, but how easy is it for them to share, or how easy is it, sorry, for them to actually interact with that document? Yes, it can be done, but it can be difficult. And in terms of equity then, every person has the right to access and use all types of digital documents in a way which best suits them. OrbitNote allows students to easily manipulate those PDF documents and it gives them access to all of the familiar read and write tools that we're gonna go through that allow them to be independent and successful. So we can now transform and interact with those documents in a completely different way. And we have now been able to create an accessible, dynamic and collaborative space that works for everybody. 
So I'm going to let Laura take the reins now. Uh, she's going to take you through both the tools to show you how they work and how they can be used to support your students. Thank you so much, Angela. Angela's done a great job introducing Nora, but no, I don't think I have anything else to say. <laughs> Thank you very much. So what we'll do now is look at Orbit Note. So I'm going to start with our newest solution. Hopefully some of you are familiar with Read and Write, and I will show that as well, but I'm going to start with Orbit Note. So as Angela said, Orbit Note is a dynamic way to interact and annotate on to PDFs. Um, Angela focused heavily on how the student can annotate on it and use it. I automatically default to the teacher, but it works either way. You know, Alex, I have a few examples in my head of how a teacher would annotate them. But obviously, teachers and students would have access to this tool so they can use it in any way that they want. So the first thing with PDFs, um, as lecturers or teachers, you have created uh, an abundance of PDFs in the past but they're inaccessible. And as Angela says, you know, that's not really the best way for our students to be learning. If you email them out a PDF, how are they reading it? How are they accessing it? How are they looking up some of those words that are on it? Also, if you created a PDF maybe five years ago, some of the information actually may be out of date. So OrbitNote gives you an opportunity to amend historic PDFs and let your students uh, interact with it as well. So I have opened a PDF and it's an image only PDF. So what that means is it's just not accessible. None of my features will work on it. I can't hear it aloud. I can't interact with it at all. And that's one of the main features of Orbit Note. Over on the right hand side, when you open a PDF with Orbit Note, the scan text will appear with a red dot beside it. What that means is it has identified this as inaccessible. It's image only, but it will scan it for me. So what you do is you hit scan the text and it will create an accessible PDF. So I actually don't scan this because I always keep this for my um, my demonstrations. So what I'm going to do is blue Peter style, open a PDF that I scanned earlier. So this is what you would see. If the PDF is already accessible in that it's not no longer an image, the wee red dot in the scan text won't appear on the right hand side. So that's the difference. On the left hand side, you have the features that some of you may be familiar with, the read and write features, the accessibility features. So they're inbuilt into this toolbar. Then what you have is your extra features to help you annotate and interact with this document. So what I'm going to do here is firstly just show you the text aloud. Highlight the text and hit play. The screen masking. What we have in the screen masking here is our reading ruler. I actually really like this. This is a personal preference. You can default this on or off, but I like the way it focuses on the paragraph that you're actually reading. Really helps me focus on that and remove the distractions from the rest of the page. So that's two really important accessibility features. And then what you would have now is your dictionary and picture dictionary. So what I like about these is if you pick a word, click your dictionary, but also click the visual dictionary, you can have them open at the same time. Any text you see can be read loud. An uneasy psychological state, he suffered an attack of nerves. And then you have the visual aid on the right hand side. So because this is fully accessible, I can continue to read through this, maybe come across another word I'm unfamiliar with and have the dictionary meaning and the visual aid there. Scroll along, not everything will have a visual aid, but if they don't, nothing will appear. You just, you'll always get your um, dictionary on the left-hand side. You'll always get the definition on the left-hand side. So they're just very basic accessibility features. So what we had was a PDF that we couldn't read, we couldn't access, we couldn't look up any of the words. By using Orbit Note, we've made it accessible. And now I can have the text to speech, I can have the screen masking, and I can use the dictionary and the picture dictionary to access that information. I'm just going to close this down. So from a teacher side, I mentioned there that you may have historic PDFs. Some of them may be out of date or they may not be relevant to that particular class. But this PDF as it stands, up until now, you couldn't really, unless you physically printed it and made notes on it and rescanned it in, you weren't really able to adapt it. So say you come across some information that you want to score out or get rid of before you send a student. 
there's a few things you can do. You can use the shapes here, or you can use, I prefer just using the freehand. I'm going to increase the line thickness. And I'm just going to score out some of the information. You'll see what it looks like in a minute. Just going to score that out. Maybe scroll down a bit more and score this line out. Maybe if this was a document uh, you were sharing with somebody and there was some private information on it, you could score some of that out as well. Then what I would do is I would put a push pin in the document. I can either type in here using the keyboard or dictate. I have scored out information that's no longer relevant. So that wee push pin appears. What I like about the push pin is I can add in lots of additional information here. It will not affect the visual aspect of the PDF, but when I share this, and I'll talk about that either after, the student can click on this and they can have that read aloud. So they can, any notes that I make here, the student can access as well. What we also have is the text box. So the text box, I already put something here, I'll delete that. So this actually writes on the PDF. So this will physically amend the look of the PDF. So you might want to put here, um, focus on page one and two. So I'm using the typewriter this time instead of the dictation and click away. So that's actually amended the PDF. I've added in further instruction or detail or information. So one PDF, historic PDF that was out of date, I've taken it. I've amended it very slightly to make it up to date. I've added in further notes. And then what I can actually do is share it with the annotations with my students. So I can share this PDF as it stands now. So I'll just, um, there was the freehand drawn I've shown you and you can also draw shapes. So even going back to the freehand drawn, if you wanted to draw arrows, it doesn't really matter. It's not, sometimes you get PDFs where there's more space in it, you can do a wee bit more, but you can scroll down here, for example, there's some other push pins in here that I put in earlier. If you wanna draw a circle around really important information, turn that off, go back to your push pin. Oh, sorry, two seconds. I just need to put it above that. This paragraph is really important. Focus on this for, oh. Focus on this paragraph for your exam. Focus on this paragraph for your exam. Sorry, I kept on hitting the wrong, wrong icon there. So I hit prediction and um, what I meant to hit was the dictation there. So there again. So you've circled a paragraph and you've made an extra annotation there as well. And again, you just work through that PDF and then you share it with the student. So you imagine if you're a student and you've been sent this PDF, it's up to date. You can now access it. All of the PDF features will be available. All you need to do now is then what the student can do is, sorry, I must have something on. Some of my features have been grayed out there. I'm not sure why. So stop. Oh, that's all it is. So what a student can actually do here is Use a dictionary to look um, words up, but take keywords and use the highlighters. So what I'm doing is highlighting the word, then going up to the toolbar and using the highlighting tab. And what I'll show you what I can do in a second, come out of that and choose this feature, which is collect highlights. Or I, sorry, it's not collect highlights, it's vocabulary sheet I'm showing you here. So this is when you take keywords from a document and make a revision list. So as a student or as a teacher, you can create this in advance. What you would do is you would highlight the key points, key words, and create a vocabulary list from it. So historical PDFs can come to life for you as a teacher or for the students. You can take information from it, you can amend it, you can adapt it, and you can make it up to date as well. So and so I can't see the screen. I'm just going to skip back to the main screen to see if there's any questions yet. No, you're all happy enough. Just let me know, and me and Angela know, if you use PDFs at the minute, um, how are you using them? Would you like to start using them again? Because I know a lot of people kind of stopped using them because they weren't accessible. If you have any feedback at all on that, just throw it into the comments. And so I can't see the comments, but jump on again if I'm chattering away and any questions come up there.
So that is Orbit Note. So this is a standalone product. This is separate from Read and Write. As I said, some of the Read and Write accessibility features are in, built into it to make it a complete product. But what I'm going to do now is just show you Read and Write. I always call Read and Write our bread and butter. Um, so I'm going to jump on to Read and Write now. So this is the lovely Read and Write. So as you can probably see, if you've never seen Read and Write, some of the features are duplicated, but they're used for different reasons. So the Orbit Note toolbar is a PDF, solely PDFs, okay? What I should actually mention here is if you have Chromebooks at your university and you do online exams, Orbit Note can be used in online exams. It's, a, it's in development. We are at the first stage in that we can lock the Chromebook. We can... Um, open the Orbit Note PDF onto one screen so that all you can do is read back the PDF. So I'm not sure if that's something you'd be interested in as well. It actually just popped into my head here. But um, in the future, you're going to be able to put the Chromebook into chaos, chaos mode, still be able to access Orbit Note in a reduced format. You'll be able to read the text aloud, use the um, screen masking and use the highlighters. So that might be something to take into consideration as well. So. Read and write. Sorry, I went down a rabbit hole there and I need to refocus. So read and write is our, a toolbar you use for literacy, for reading, for research. It's all about accessibility and helping your students become independent, especially at university level. They don't have the support they have that they may have had in college or um, schools. They need to be able to study themselves. So everything I showed you in Orbit Notes, so the text to speech, the dictionary, the picture dictionary, the screen masking, can all that's all part of read and write as well. So there's your text speech, dictionary, picture dictionary, screen masking, and the vocab sheets available here. So I can do all of that now within a Microsoft Word or a Google Doc as well, or the internet. What I'm going to show though is what how to use read and write at a university level if you were doing lots and lots of research. So this is just a uh, it's just a Word document with some information on it. It's a lot of information. It's black and white text. It's very small text. That can be quite difficult for me to process. And if I want to create revision notes, I'm having to copy and paste, create new documents. It becomes quite confusing. The research folder um, is a very easy way to collect bits of information as you as you go through the year, I suppose. So it doesn't matter when you pick it up, you can throw it into the research folder. It's literally as easy as that. So if I'm in here and I think this paragraph of information will be great from coursework, where am I gonna save that to? Save it to your research folder. It opens here when you click it and you just hit the plus, add text. Sorry, it's opened on my other screen here. And then it's asking you, is there any folders you wanna add it to? I'm gonna add a folder and I'm gonna talk, this is for my coursework. Okay. Click it, okay, and save. Then I'm working away and I find another paragraph. Hit the research folder, hit add again. Sorry, it keeps opening on the other screen. I'm gonna choose the folder this time, which was coursework and hit okay and save. That's as simple as it is. Copy and paste them whether you're on the internet or on a Microsoft Word document and put it into the research folder. Then what happens is you open the research folder by clicking this icon and it brings you to your folders. So I have one on circulatory systems and one for coursework. So if now you you come to the end of the year and you want to take this information and see it on a Word document, you can do that. What you can also do in here is save images as well. So I've saved an image as well. What I'm gonna do then is export all that information onto a new Word document. So there's the information in the background. So there's all the paragraphs that I took and it tells me exactly where I got them from. So that actually gives me the website and the date that I accessed it. So if I do want to use this in my coursework, I can because I can actually reference it. So as you can see there, this is just a wee bit of information, a wee folder I created beforehand. You can see it was all created the 18th of May, which is today. But as you can imagine, if you go through the year and you find snippets of information on the internet or Microsoft Word, throw it in here as you go through and then export this at the end. It may You may think, right, that's now not relevant. You delete it all. 
But what you have here is key points, really good bits of information from the internet that then you can um, use for your revision or your research. I think that's a really good tool. Oh, sorry, Angela. Sorry, Laura, we have a couple of comments in here. Um, if you just want Let me to go back to the screen. Yes, yeah. sorry. Okay, so. Okay, so we'll start with Lillian. Hi, Lillian, how are you? Lovely, you can join us. Um, annotations are great for the sighted learners. I'm right for this site. Yeah, I agree, Lillian, but what, let me go back to my PDF, actually. So when I added the annotations in, and I'm assuming you maybe mean these ones, so if I added this push pin, they would need to be able to click on the push pin, but once they click on it, they're able to hear it aloud. And if that's not ideal for your student, what you would then maybe have to do instead of using the push pin, use the text. Add in the, it physically amends the document. So let me close that down. So up here, I added in text. And again, the student would be able to hear that aloud. You can also increase the font as well. And sorry, I probably should have said that about hearing that text back and being able to increase the font there as well. I'm not sure if that's useful or not, Lillian. I'm going to go back and see. Are they, do you know what? I don't know. Angela, would you mind writing down that last question from Lillian and we can find that out? I have Lillian's yeah. email address. No um, I find that out for you, Lillian, okay? Then Susan, I've tried opening an image PDF in order, but no, the scan text button is grayed out. Susan, I'm not sure, are you a paying customer? Um, you do have to actually pay for Orbit Note. Um, it's a standalone product. Now, as part of Read and Write, if you have Read and Write, you get some of the accessibility features as for free. But the actually, if you if it needs scanned, that's a paid for feature. But if you want to email myself or Angela, we can check that for you. And um, we'll reshare our emails at the end of the demonstration. Yeah, so Susan, what you have is a site license for Read and Write, which gives you the freemium features of Orbit Note. <laughs> That's a tongue tire. So you basically get to have a look at it and try some of the basic features. But the main feature, which is the OCR, you would have to pay for. Okay, so I'm going to skip back now. Now, where was I? <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> Let me see. So, yes, yeah, so all I've shown is the research folder. Okay, so Research folder, great, taking information, minimizing it, creating research notes, and they follow you about, which is brilliant. The next thing that I really like is the audio maker. Again, very large piece of text. This would even give me a headache reading this. What I can do is I can take this text as much as I want. I'll just do this amount for the purpose of the demonstration and hit the audio maker, which is in the middle of the toolbar, and it creates an audio file. You can preview it. You um, Save it wherever you want onto your computer, and then you would change the name of it and create an MP3. What I like about this, and I said every single webinar is, it is it, everyone's listening to podcasts at the minute. Everyone has earphones in when they're traveling in and out from school, work, whatever it may be. We're all talking about podcasts. So accessing information in an audio format is a normal way for us now. Students do have to travel into schools. They may go for a walk. Providing something in an audio format is just going a step further for them instead of sending them all out black and white text, getting the habit as a tutor of creating an MP3 file for them. Or the student can do it themselves, but it just means from an accessibility point, you're thinking of the students that you're giving it to and you're giving them an alternative way to access that as well. So that's a very nice feature. And again, they can take text from Microsoft Word, from Google Docs and from the internet and create a nice audio file. Even yourself, if you have very large pieces of information to read before a report, maybe, before a meeting, audio file and just listen to it safely, if you can, on your drive-in or on your bus journey. So research folder and audio file are massive. And this is, I'm going to re revert back to Angela's slide where it's necessary for some. So to me, screen masking, someone absolutely needs a screen mask and there's no two ways around that. But the useful for all really comes into play when we're talking about the research features. Yes, of course, they can all use the screen masking and the play features too. 
But the research folder, the audio file, it's just given everyone a different way to access the information and to make it easier for them as well. So the talk and type, I showed it when it was in the PDF, but I'm just going to show it here again. And again, some people, they, what if they come into you one day with a broken arm? This is a piece of tool or software that anyone can use. They, they may get, um, they may just be tired typing and um, they just want to quickly get down a wee bit of information, use the dictation that's inbuilt into the software. So the student uses this. It normally picks me up quite well, but we will see. I don't know where my cursor is. <laughs> Let me see. I don't know where that information went. It went wherever the cursor was. Let me try that again. Hopefully it picks me up this time. This is good 98% of the time. And that's with my strong accent. Okay, so the dictation, I think, is pretty good. Um, you do obviously need a headset. You know, I'm sometimes asked, you know, what if you're sitting in a room? Even if I took the headset off now and tried to use the audio on the computer, I just don't find it picks me up as well. I would always recommend a headset. And this this is, a, I don't think this is particularly dear. It's a wee cheap one. Um, it also works if I have the you know, the ones that you put in your ears, the, I'm not sure what you call them, ear pods, or <laughs> I don't know. Um, so that's a really nice tool. Very easy for the student to use. I think it's useful for anybody, but if somebody really struggles with getting their thoughts down onto paper, they struggle with the keypad or anything like that, let them try the talk and type and see how they get on with that. So I'm just going to show you one more tool. So on the PDF, I showed you that if you highlighted one word, a keyword, it created your vocab list. So what I'm going to do is use the same tools, the highlighting tool here, but highlight sentences or paragraphs. So again, look at this amount of information. This is just complete information overload. There's no way I'm going to be able to figure this all out. What I'm going to do is read it and then highlight key points. So what I'm doing is going to the tool or the document, highlighting it, and then choosing a color at the top. In this particular instance, it doesn't really matter what color I'm using, but say, for example, you're in a document and it may cover two different topics. You can use yellow for one topic and green for the other. Once you've finished, you just hit collect highlights. It does what it says on the tin. It's just going to collect the highlights. So all the yellow will appear together, all the blue and all the green. And again, it will just tell you exactly where you got it from. So that's a nice way to minimize the document, to take out key points. The research folder in this are pretty similar, so it just depends what it is you're using it for. I think the research folder is good if it's a long term thing, as in you just keep on throwing in bits throughout the year and at the very end you're going to maybe bring that together or at the end of the term. This might be better if you're doing coursework that day where you're just going through lifting bits out and it's on one document in front of you. Obviously, then you would need to save this document. You couldn't add to it. Once you've created, that's the only bit about this. Hence why I really, really like the research folder. You can continue to add throughout to that throughout the year. So I really, really like that. So as I said, the accessibility features are all there. They're all inbuilt. But the necessary for some useful for all is my biggest strap line. This is brilliant for anybody. It is a site license. Make sure everyone's aware of it and make sure that they're using it. And what I people always forget is this isn't just for students. Um, you have staff that have possibly dyslexia and undiagnosed dyslexia, or they just haven't declared it. Let them know that it's available as well if you get a site license. And our staff are sometimes studying too or trying to create reports. The research folder and the collect highlights might actually be very useful for them as well. So I'm just going to come back to the main screen. I can close that now. And let me see. I'm just trying to see some of the comments there. So, yes, Lillian, <laughs> this is always the downfall. Um, the read and write, there is some slight differences between the read and write and the Chrome extension, hence why I always default to read and write in Microsoft. I do think it is a slightly better toolbar, but maybe over time we will feed that back and hopefully over time it will 
we come in there and is in there as well and the screen mask and yep I'm going to show the screen mask again honestly I think as a tool regardless of your ability I use this like the bl reading black and white all the time can be very very difficult so the one thing I didn't show and I'm, I'm not going to assume that you know this actually the screen mask and you can change the colors this is my problem sometimes I assume that everybody knows everything about reading and writing. and that's the reason I'm here because you don't so screen masking you can tint the whole screen which I have on or you can use the ruler and then what you do you go down here and you choose your color you choose your reading ruler yes I have the reading ruler on and the reading ruler color and then you just hit screen mask so it's open on the other screen I need to open more dock again two seconds I'm using two different toolbars here I'm not sure if you can still hear me. My screen has just decided to crash on me. Just bear with me one wee second. I might need to shut down, hold on. Angela, if you can hear me, if you just wanna take over and maybe share the last slide. I do apologize about this. I was trying to show the screen mask in, in uh, Microsoft Word. No worries, I will jump on here for you can you see that okay i can't see anything my screen's just completely white oh you can't okay okay so everybody else can hopefully see the the final screen uh laura do you want to just if um, you add your screen might will automatically remove i think angela nice. you add yours to the stream should be added Hi, Arwen, eh? <laughs> yeah, it's definitely sharing my screen. Can everybody see your screen? All I, I can just see my screen's like my computer's just broke. Ah, okay, yeah, they can see they can see the slide now. So if yeah. you want to go ahead. <laughs> So sorry, but all I can see is a lovely big white screen. Oh. Sorry about that. I just wanted to show you the screen masking in an actual colour. But what, what I was trying to say is everything is adaptable to the student. It's all personalised, the voice, um, the colour of the screen masking, etc. So if you want any further information, what I've said there, if you want further information on Orbit Note, because it's a new product, do give us a shout. My email address is online. But if you need any help with Read and Write or Orbit, no, do get in touch. Myself or Angela would love to help you and hear from you. And it's been lovely to have you all here today. And I hope you have a good evening. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Angela. Bye. And so if you just make sure to end it. Yeah, yeah.